One of the most valuable loyalty currencies that you can collect in Canada is a rather unexpected one. It's Alaska Airlines mileage plan. Even though Alaska Airlines is a US-based airline, they do issue a credit card here in Canada, which allows us to earn miles very easily. And they have some pretty fantastic sweet spots, especially for flying business class or first class to and from Asia. So let's jump in and look over the details of how you can maximize the Alaska program for yourself. Let's begin by talking about the best ways to earn Alaska miles, and then we'll head over to the desk to talk about some redemptions. The best way to rack up the miles here in Canada is through the MBNA Alaska Airlines MasterCard, which grants either 20,000 or 30,000 Alaska miles as a sign-up bonus upon spending $1,000 in the first three months. Now, why are there two different sign-up bonuses? Well, that's because there are two different versions of the card. There's the World Elite version, which is for those with incomes higher than $80,000 per year and has an annual fee of $99, as well as the Platinum Plus version, which is for those who don't meet the income threshold on the World Elite and has an annual fee of $75. In either case, you can earn $60 in cashback when you apply for the card via the Great Canadian Rebates cashback website, meaning that your net out-of-pocket cost is going to be either $39 for the World Elite or $15 for the Platinum Plus. And those are incredibly worthwhile expenses compared to the 30,000 or 20,000 miles you'll be earning. Now, MBNA is a bit of a strange credit card issuer because on one hand, they tend to be quite strict in declining your application if you've had too many credit inquiries recently. But on the other hand, if you do get declined and you have another MBNA product open at the moment, then you can call MBNA and say, hey, I understand that I've been declined for this new credit card. I'm not actually seeking additional credit, but I'd rather just like to split off the credit limit for my existing credit card to get approved for this new card. And usually they're quite happy to do that, even if they declined you originally. And they're happy to split off your existing credit limit to get you approved for this new card and get you the sign up bonus on it as well. As a result of this, what a lot of people do is they'll open an MBNA Alaska credit card, keep it around for let's say three months, and then they'll do a product switch to a no fee MBNA card to use as their backup account to split off the credit limit in case they get declined on their next MBNA Alaska application. Now, unfortunately, you can't hold multiple MBNA Alaska credit cards at once, even if they're the two separate versions, the World Elite and the Platinum Plus, they still count as the same product, so you can only hold one at a time. For those of you who are playing the US credit card game, the Bank of America Alaska credit card is another good shout. It's got 40,000 Alaska miles as a sign-up bonus. But if you're Canadian and applying for this card with an ITIN in place of a social security number, then be aware that Bank of America only accepts the ITIN on in-branch applications and not when you're applying online. So besides earning Alaska miles via the credit cards, there are a few other ways that you can rack up the miles as well. One of them is to transfer points over from the Marriott Bonvoy Hotel Loyalty Program, where the optimal ratio is 60,000 Bonvoy points equals 25,000 Alaska miles. But the downside to this method is that you might need to transfer over a huge amount of Bonvoy points to get a meaningful number of Alaska miles, and those points could well be better used towards something like hotel stays instead. And the other way to earn Alaska miles that I would actually recommend quite enthusiastically if you have the budget for it, is to outright buy miles from the program when they're offering their 50% bonuses. Now, this won't allow you to travel for almost free like the way that credit card sign-up bonuses would, but it still represents a huge discount on the regular price of a business class or a first class ticket. For example, 70,000 Alaska miles is generally how much you would need to fly first class to Asia. And during a 50% bonus, you could buy those 70,000 miles for about 1,379 US dollars. Now that's of course still a good chunk of money to spend, but it's a huge discount compared to the usual price of first class. 
and it also lets you acquire those miles instantaneously instead of waiting six to nine months to rack them up via the credit card signup bonuses. Okay, so now that we've talked about the best ways to earn miles, let's go over to the desk and figure out how we can use these miles for some killer trips, shall we? One of the most important things that you need to understand about loyalty programs is that each one has its own particular type of trips that it's especially well suited for. So when it comes to Alaska Airlines mileage plan, the program's strong suits are definitely going to be flying business class or first class to and from Asia. Now, of course, you can also redeem your Alaska miles to other places as well, but the value generally isn't quite going to be as good as flying between North America and Asia. So that's what we're going to focus on for most of this video. Now, unlike many other airlines which are part of an airline alliance, Alaska Airlines simply has independent partnerships with many different airlines around the world. And one of the best sweet spots for redeeming Alaska miles at the moment lies in its partnership with Cathay Pacific. You can redeem Alaska miles on Cathay Pacific flights between North America and Asia for only 50,000 miles in business class one way or 70,000 miles in first class one way. And those are some of the lowest mileage rates in the industry for flying premium cabins across the Pacific. And with those 70,000 miles, not only can you fly Cathay Pacific first class to Hong Kong, but you can actually have a stopover in Hong Kong for as long as you'd like, and then continue on to South Africa in Cathay Pacific business class as well for no additional cost. And that's a pretty unbelievable sweet spot, arguably one of the most compelling in any loyalty program at the moment. So if you have any interest in visiting South Africa, then flying Cathay Pacific first in business class on the way there via Hong Kong should be one of your top choice methods for doing so. But the tricky thing about redeeming Alaska miles on Cathay Pacific is that Cathay Pacific flights don't actually show up on the Alaska website. So what we need to do is to use other partner websites to search for the space and then call Alaska to book. Now, one of the websites you can use is the British Airways Avios website where you can search for Cathay Pacific's routes such as between Hong Kong and Toronto, Vancouver, or any number of US cities. Now, note that we aren't talking about redeeming Avios here. That's a separate video for another day. But instead, we're just using the Avios website to search for Cathay Pacific award space before calling Alaska Airlines to book it. The British Airways website is a little clunky in the sense that you gotta click each date one by one. So another website we could use is the Qantas website where you can again search for one of Cathay Pacific's routes and then you get this nice calendar view where you can see exactly which dates have space in business class or first class. So either the Qantas website or the British Airways website would work. So there, we found a flight in business class between Vancouver and Hong Kong. So in theory, we should be able to call Alaska Airlines and book this flight using our Alaska miles. Keep in mind that Alaska usually sees the same space as all the other partners, but that's not always the case. Sometimes there might be slight mismatches. So the only way to know for sure is to call Alaska and search day by day. Now, besides Cathay Pacific, another redemption that's amazing value for your Alaska miles is Japan Airlines, which also has an excellent product on board business class and first class. Business class will cost you between 60 and 65,000 miles, one way between North America and Asia, and first class, which is an amazing experience, will cost you between 70,000 or 75,000 miles, depending on where in Asia you go. For these rates, you can book a flight from North America to Tokyo, have a stop over there for as long as you'd like, and then continue on to other points in Asia, as far as India, Indonesia, Malaysia, or Singapore. And compared to Cathay Pacific, the good news with Japan Airlines is that you can book them directly on the Alaska Airlines website. Simply type in your desired route from one of their North American gateway cities to Tokyo, and then search based on the date. The Alaska website is generally very fast and responsive, so you'll be able to see pretty quickly which dates have space in your desired class of service. You can also search for the onward flight from Tokyo to somewhere else in Asia, let's say Singapore, in the same way. And then what you can do once you've found the space on both flights is to search them together on the multi-city search engine in order to book your premium cabin redemption to Asia with a stopover in Tokyo. So I would say that Cathay Pacific and Japan Airlines are the two major redemptions that you should concentrate on if you want to get the best value for your Alaska miles and use them towards 
extremely enjoyable premium flights on some of the world's best airlines. Now, there are a few other redemptions that we should also talk about, which might not always be quite as good value, but could still be the right fit depending on your travel plans. In addition to Cathay Pacific and Japan Airlines, another very reasonable option for flying to and from Asia is Hainan Airlines, which fly a number of different routes between North America and mainland China. Hainan Airlines only charges 50,000 Alaska miles for the one-way journey, but the downside is that they do have a little bit of fuel surcharges, maybe 200 US dollars worth. Then there are the airlines that can fly you over to Europe, such as Iceland Air, Aer Lingus, and Finnair. And these redemption price points tend not to be quite as good as the flights over to Asia, but hey, if you just wanna to go to Europe and you have a stash of Alaska miles, then by all means, you can look into flying with one of these airlines. Finally, you can redeem your Alaska miles on Emirates, and in particular on Emirates First Class, with a free-flowing Dom Perignon and the shower in the sky. These redemptions are extremely expensive, starting at 150,000 miles between North America and the Middle East, so it's really gonna depend on what your travel goals are. If you wanna stretch the value of your miles as far as they can go, then you should probably stick with Cathay Pacific or Japan Airlines. But if you'd rather use your miles to, you know, really reward yourself for a life well lived, then you better save up those miles and start splurging for Emirates first class. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a thing or two about maximizing your Alaska miles. If so, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. And let me know in the comments, what are your personal favorite ways to redeem your Alaska miles? And what are you saving up your miles for right now to redeem for next? See you in the next video. Things you need to understand. Can't speak, can't speak. It's action.